Okay, so today's topic is lesson nine, which is key signatures for major keys. What we've already done, off of the treble clef, and the first thing we've done is using each note name one time only, starting on C. I've created a diatonic scale that's made of whole steps and half steps. This particular pattern, starting on C, we can read right off the keyboard. So putting up my favorite uh, ceiling cam, you can see that C to D is a whole step, D to E whole step, E to F is a half step between scale degree three and four, whole step, whole step, whole step, and one more half step between scale degree seven and one. Scale degree seven is really important. We're gonna come back to that, but that is the leading tone. So, going back to my scale, C to D, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That would be the template that I could apply to create a scale on any pitch. So, for example, if I started on G, G is actually C, D, E, F, G is the dominant. Just call it the dominant and the other names are on page 125 in your textbook but the dominant is one we're going to focus on and also this one which is called the leading tone like I just mentioned so the dominant if I take the dominant note and I start a scale on the dominant and I do my system G one time A B C D E F G. And I'm using my template whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. I do have to alter one note of the scale, and that note is the leading tone. So I've created a leading tone in my scale, and that means that to create this system, I used one flat key. So starting from G. dominant, which would be D, and I start on D and use each note name one time, diatonic whole steps and half steps, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. I'm going to take the F sharp that I've already used, and now I'm going to have to create one more altered pitch to make this follow the template. So D to E is a whole step, E to F sharp. keep doing that system and you'll notice the first scale had no sharps, the second scale had one sharp, the next had two sharps, and it will continue that way. So I can take these and I can put them on a wheel that we call the circle of fifths. So if I make a circle starting at the top C and I count C, D, E, F, G to the dominant pitch. If I start a scale on G, I'll need one sharp to create that scale and to, for, to make the scale follow the template. If I go up to the fifth of that, G from G, G, A, B, C, D, I'm traveling by fifths. And every time I'm adding one sharp by adding a leading tone to my scale. So if I keep going, D, E, F, G, A, a, B, C, D, E, B, and B, C, D, E, F sharp. This has to be called F sharp because I've already added the F sharp when I went around the wheel. So this scale has zero sharps and flats. It's what we used to call a white key scale. This has one sharp, which is F sharp, two sharps, F and C, three, four, five, six. If I had one more scale, it would be C sharp. And it would be C sharp because the D scale had two sharps already, F sharp and C sharp. 
So I can continue going this way around the wheel, um, but let me take a second and talk about what notes I add to my scale. So you saw the first sharp that we add is F. F sharp is the first one that shows up when we follow the template. The next one was C. When I started on D and created a scale following my whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step half step to create this half step at the end to raise the leading tone, I use C sharp. The next sharp is G. If I kept doing this, I could, I could work it out. D, A, E, B. And now I've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes, which means every single note of my scale is sharp. So the first sharp, F sharp, showed up in my G scale, F and C, F, C, G, F, C, G, D, F, C, G, D, A, F, C, G, D, A, E, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. So that's all seven notes are sharp. Okay, some people like to use a mnemonic device to remember the order that the sharps show up in. The one that I think is cute is fat cats get down and elephants boogie. So fat cats get down and elephants boogie. These sharps always show up in this exact order. So I can take these, instead of using them as accidentals in my scale, I can take them out of the piece that I'm writing and I can store them up at the beginning. We call that a key signature. And that will tell me that for these, this entire piece, every single F that I play needs to be an F sharp, not an F natural. So in this scale, I can take these accidentals out and store them up over here, F sharp and C sharp. Same thing for A, the, the A scale would have F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and so on. So if I'm drawing my sharps, you would think that it didn't really matter where you put them, but as musicians, we like to read things quickly and we get used to the pattern that we use today, slightly different than we used to use in the Baroque era in the 1600s. It was a little bit different, but in this case, F sharp, C sharp in treble clef, you have to put it here. G sharp has to go above the staff in treble clef, D, A, E, B. So this is what it needs to look like every time you use a key signature in treble clef. In bass clef, it's very similar, but I'm going to go F sharp, C sharp, G, D, A, E, oops, E, B. Okay? So the general pattern for sharps is this one, two, one, two, three in a row, one, two. If I have one sharp, it's always the first one. So I never have just B sharp, it doesn't happen. That doesn't work with our template. So F sharp, C sharp, G, D, A, E, B. Fat cats, get down, and elephants boogie. So they need to be exactly that way. And this is why I was so careful about the middle of your accidental coming exactly on a line or exactly on a space. Because from now on, they need to represent all of the Fs in the entire piece, all of the Cs, in the entire piece. So that's how those work. So now you might ask, what about this other half? It has to do with flats. So the way that the flats show up, when they show up in a scale, we could, the way that they appear is if we start on F and make a scale, diatonic, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, diatonic whole steps and half steps, and I follow my template, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. To make this pattern work, I have to do this. I end up using a flat on the fourth note of the scale, which is called the subdominant. So, I take this, and now I've followed my template, whole steps and half steps, and the B is flat. So one flat comes here. So we do call this wheel 
the circle of fifths. And that's because if I go this direction, I get fifths. If I go this direction, I get fourths. Because if you think about, say that I'm going from F to B flat. If I go from an F to a B flat, that's a fourth. F, G, A, B, F, G, A, B, four notes. But if I go from B flat to F, B, C, D, E, F, it's five notes. So depending on if I'm going from the tonic note to the subdominant, or from the subdominant to the tonic, it's a fourth one direction and a fifth the other direction. So in this case, if I go by fourths, I can count down from around the circle. There's one other, sorry USB drive, I'll write you back in a minute. There's one other way we can create a wheel. We can use enharmonic equivalents and continue in fifths. And what I mean by that is, if we go from F sharp, what is the other name for F sharp? Enharmonically equivalent, the exact same place on the keyboard, we could also call it G flat. And C sharp has another name, D flat. So if we call it D flat and continue, then we can go G, A, B, C, D. That's five notes. So now I've continued in this direction by fifths. In which case, D, E, F, G, A would be my next one. A, B, C, D, E flat. E, F, G, A, B flat. B, C, D, E, F. And now I've completed my almost symmetrical circle. And in this case, this would have one flat, two flats, three flats, four flats. D flat has five flats, as opposed to C sharp, which has seven. G flat has six, and then I could add one more, I could call this C flat, and that would have seven flats. So, hopefully you sort of understood the principle of it. Sorry, it's a little messy, but here's the cool thing about the order that the flats come in. So if I took this scale and started on an F and I realize there's one flat, it's B flat. So I can take it out of my, out of my accidental and I can put it into a key signature, which means every single B in this piece is flat. Well, here's a convenient thing. When I have two flats, it's B flat and E flat. When I have three, it's B, E, A, and it continues D, G, C, F. That's the exact opposite order of the sharps. So you really only have to memorize fat cats get down and elephants boogie, and then you can use the order of flats is the reverse. So the order that the sharps come in when you make a key signature, like we saw, if I did bass clef, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. If I do flats, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. So the last flat to show up, seven notes in our scale, seven flats, seven sharps is the max we can have. At that point, we'd have to add double sharps. So that's a theoretical scale that's possible, although it's not practical. So if I did bass clef, for the flats, it would look B, E, A, D, G, C, F is below. So in the um, treble clef, we had one sharp F, C, G set on top of the staff. And in the bass clef, you'll end up with one flat F off the, off the um, staff. So the order of sharps I had said comes one, two, one, two, three, one, two, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. The order of sharps comes one, two, one, two, one, two, one, if you want to think of it that way. So it's B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Okay, so that is the order of sharps and flats, the common scales, and um, we've drawn the circle of fifths, which is in your textbook on page 148. If you can replicate this yourself, you can use it anytime you want to on an exam. There are alternate methods. I will post one online for how, um, kind of a more mathematical way that you can use negative numbers 
negative and positive numbers to come up with your order of accidentals. Or you can just memorize this wheel. I would say pause me right now and see if you can replicate one yourself without looking. See if you can flip it to the enharmonic and continue around the wheel so that you can, you can figure out how to go from zero to seven sharps and from zero to seven flats. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out was in, um, in your textbook, page 147, they talk about a little, it's at the very bottom of the page, right before 9.3, and they talk about three bullet points, which are tricks that you can use to come up with the tonic note of each scale. So the way the trick works, one trick is, and I've sort of already given it, given it away, if I show you this and I ask you what scale would this make, the last sharp in your key, F, C, G, the very last one, in this case it's G, that is the leading tone. So you can figure out if the leading tone is G sharp, if I go a diatonic half step above G sharp, I get A. And this would make the A scale. But you can check it. And you can always use one system to check the other. So if I'm pretty sure this is A, I see three sharps, I'm pretty sure that's the secret formula on how to make it A scale, I can check it by going whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. If I start on an A, I am gonna end up having to raise this pitch, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. And, that, and you can double check yourself. Good, that is the formula for the A scale. I just checked it. So the very last sharp is the leading tone. The leading tone leads to the tonic. So that's helpful if you're in a scale that has sharps. I'll do one more example. F, C, G, D, A. If A sharp is my last sharp, this scale would be a B scale. So that a B major scale. So that would be the leading tone leads to the tonic a diatonic half step above the last sharp. The rule that you can use for keys that have flats as a shortcut, so you could also use a circle of fifths, you can always go back to your whole steps and half steps, but one more alternative would be the second to last flat is the name of your scale. So if I have two flats, B flat, E flat, the second to the last flat is B flat. The second to the last flat in this scale is also my first flat, but lots of times say that I have a scale that is B, E, A, D. I'll pause. The second to last flat is the tonic. B, E, A, D is an A flat scale. So in bass clef, A flat scale. Again, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Or F, C, the order of sharps, F, C, G, D, A, E, B, all in lines. You can see all of this in the chapter. For your homework, you are going to, you, um, you're gonna do the whole uh, lesson. So part A, you're writing your key signatures. Hopefully you're practicing figuring out which lines and spaces, so I am gonna take points off if you don't follow the exact placement of the flats and sharps that are in your scales. You'll do them in both clefs. The second section, you're going to take a pitch inventory like we did in chapter, sorry, lesson eight, and you're going to figure out what scale is being represented probably a good way to guess because each one of these has a key signature so you can figure out what key signature it is and then double check to make sure there aren't any accidentals that are um, modifying that scale in this case there aren't any and then the very last one is a series of key signatures and you're going to write a tonic note for each in both clefs so the, the tonic note of that scale that we're using with the key signatures. I would really recommend you take a few minutes and do some exercises on musictheory.net just to practice, especially if you think you're gonna use the cheating rule, practice that. 
If you think you're going to learn how to draw the circle of fifths or perhaps try a table, practice some with that so that you get your systems down. Our next exam is going to be sooner than the last one was, so you will be asked to identify key signatures and to create key signatures on your own. So until then, fat cats get down and elephants boogie.